السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهدي ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله العظيم من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله تعالى فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد يحيي ويميت وهو حي لا يموت بيده الخير وهو على كل شيء قدير وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه وخليله أدى الأمانة وبلغ الرسالة ونصح للأمة وكشف الغمة وتركنا على المحجة البيضاء ليلها كنهارها لا يزيغ عنها إلا هالك فعليه أفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم وعلى آله وصحبه ومن استن بسنته إلى يوم الدين اللهم اجعلنا منهم ومن الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر آمين يا رب العالمين وأوصيكم ونفسي بتقوى الله عز وجل وقد أمرنا بالحق وقال تعالى يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون ثم أما بعد we begin by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bearing witness that none has the right to be worshipped or unconditionally obeyed except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his final messenger we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send his peace and blessings upon him his family, his companions, and those that follow him until the day of judgment. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to join us with him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, with his family, his companions, and those that have followed in the highest level of Jannatul Firdaus. Allahumma ameen. Dear brothers and sisters, I want to start off this khutbah before even mentioning the topic. I want to mention a few incidents that have taken place and I want us to think if, we, if we've heard of these things happening in the news or not. In October of this year, there was a video that sparked outrage. And it was published all over the internet and all over YouTube and people were sending in emails, so on and so forth. Of a young girl in Beijing, whose father owns a hardware store. And she was only two years old and she walked out of the hardware store without her parents noticing. When she walked out of the hardware store, she walked into the middle of the busy street. When she got to the street, she was run over by a van. When the van ran her over, the driver slowed down for a little bit, but he didn't, you know, he stopped, he hesitated, but then he kept going. And then another car came and ran her over too. And then later on in the video, you see the mother running out and finding her child mutilated in the middle of the street. There were 18 bystanders in that incident. Not a single one of them chose to come out and try to rescue that girl or try to protect that girl from that tragedy or even scrape her dead body off of the ground. I'll give you another incident and you can think if you've heard this in the news or not. In October of 2008, there was a woman in... King's Hospital in Brooklyn, a 50-year-old Jamaican woman who was sitting in the emergency room and who died while she was sitting there, fell out of her chair. And on surveillance camera, the security guards walked by her, checked on her, people walked by her and saw she was dead and did absolutely nothing about it. In November of 2010, there was a video that went out and it was published on CNN. What happened to the humanity? of an old man being mugged on the streets of New York and not a single person stopping to protect him. Let's go to another incident, one that's famous in the news right now, and I'm not gonna go too long with this, but just so you can get the point. An incident of a coach, a football coach at Penn State, many of you have heard of it, who was molesting little children, but the other coaches were keeping silent about it because they didn't want to ruin the football program. Why is all of this significant? Because the Prophet ﷺ mentions to us a very, very significant sign of the end of times. That two people would commit zina in the middle of the streets. I want you to think about this. We see it today on TV. 
We see it on our computers, we see it on billboards, we see it on the front of, fronts of, mag on the front of magazine covers. Whenever you go to Walmart, whenever you go to any shopping center, you're going to see it everywhere, you're going to see magazines everywhere. Everywhere you walk, there's zina, there's adultery, there's fornication, there's nudity, and no one's saying anything about it. And Rasulullah said that in these times, the most truthful person amongst them would go to those two people. Not tell them what, that what they're doing is wrong. Not tell them that, you know, that you're going to be punished for this or you, know, you should fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or you know, our children are seeing you. But would instead tell them, do you think you could move to the side of the road, please? Think about that. And there is an old legend because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, and this hadith is a very, very, very scary hadith narrated by Imam Tirmidhi rahimahullah with an authentic chain. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إِنَّ النَّاسَ إِذَا رَأُوا الْمُنْكَرُ وَلَمْ يُغَيِّرُوهُ أَوْشَكَ أَنْ يُعَمَّهُمُ اللَّهُ بِعِقَابِهِ That people, if they start to see evil and they don't change it, then soon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will punish that entire people. And let's bring it to less extreme examples. You're sitting at home and watching TV with your kids. And as you're watching TV, whenever something comes on that you know is un-Islamic, you take your sweet time pulling over the remote, you take your three, five seconds changing the channel, by then that image has registered in every single person's mind that was watching the TV. And when you really don't want to ruin your mood, when those infomercials come up where they show the children that are starving in Africa, and everyone's having a good time and laughing and watching football and eating chips. You quickly change the channel because you don't want to spoil anybody's mood. This is a very, very, very scary disease. And this is something that with passing time, we see becoming more and more and more and more common. That Ahlul Haqq or the people that are supposed to be people of truth and people of justice, the people who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat lin nas, ta'muruna bil ma'rufi wa tanhawna anil munkar. You are the best people that was ever sent to mankind, the best nation that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent to mankind. Why? Because you command good and you, in, you, you enjoy in good and you forbid evil. When the people of haqq become passive, when truthfulness becomes to turn the blind eye, to pretend you didn't see that, to ignore injustice, whether it's injustice against another human being, or whether it's injustice against a person's own self in the form of sayyat, in the form of shameful sins, to ignore it, let it go, pretend I didn't see that, I'm not responsible, every person's for himself, every man's for himself, this is survival of the fittest. Now I want you to think about this, there's this famous legend, and many of the Arab brothers will know, it's called the Thawr al-Abyad, the white bull. Now the legend of the white bull has been told in many, many different ways. So if I'm telling it in a way that's different from the way that you've heard it or the way that you know it, it's because there's different versions, there's different riwayat, different narrations of the white bull. Some of them are more politically correct than others. Some of them are a little bit more racist than others. But anyway, here is the point from the story of the white bull, the legend of the white bull. You have three bulls that are brothers. A white bull, a black bull, and a brown bull. And they, they're surrounded by an area where you have tigers. But the tigers are refusing. There's one tiger that wants to attack, but the tiger cannot attack because he never sees those three bulls away from each other. So one day the tiger comes and he talks to the white bull and the brown bull. And he says, listen, your brother, the black bull, you know, why do you guys let him stay around? Why don't you guys just get rid of him? He's only eating your food, he's taking up your stuff. Why are you guys keeping him around? We can make this easy for you. And they said, he's our brother, we can't do anything about that. And he, he, he says to them, you don't have to do anything. Just one day, let him go. And whenever I take care of him, don't say anything about it. Just stay away, keep quiet. And so the two bulls, one day are together, the black bull goes away, 
and they hear the tiger attacking the bull and his brothers don't do anything about it. They didn't help. They didn't assist in killing him. They just stayed quiet. So the black bull was dead. Then the tiger came to the white bull and he said, hey, how about the brown bull? You could be all by yourself. You could have all this food for yourself. And you know what? We'll take care of you. We'll protect you. You don't have to worry about anything anymore. He says, what do you want me to do? He's my brother. Just leave him. Stay away from him. Keep a distance between you and him. And we'll take care of the rest. He walks away one day and his brother is devoured. And he hears his brother screaming and he does absolutely nothing about it. Then what do you think the tiger does? He goes after the white bull. And the white bull, as he's being killed, he says a very powerful statement. And this is the point of the story, regardless of what narration you have. I was eaten the day that the black bull was eaten. I died the day the black bull died. When I turned my back, when I kept silent, when I was passive. Subhanallah. When you allow injustice to happen, we know the status of dhulm. The status of oppression and transgression and injustice on the day of judgment. As the Messenger وسلم, described the dhulm, dhulumat on the day of judgment, on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. It will be darkness upon darkness upon darkness on the day of judgment because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has set rules on the day of judgment. And the first rule of the day of judgment, لا ظلم اليوم. There is no transgression today. And everyone who was guilty, وَقَدْ خَابَ مَنْ حَمَلَ ظُلْمًا Anyone who comes on the Day of Judgment with the slightest amount of oppression, with the slightest amount of injustice on the Day of Judgment, and he did not seek forgiveness from the one who he wronged and returned that right to him and seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will be held accountable on the Day of Judgment. But there's something else. When people sit quiet, and they know of oppression taking place. And the only thing they do is they change the channel. The only thing they do is they put the phone away. The only thing they do is they back off and they say, I don't want to get involved in this, this sounds messy. The only thing they do is they stay quiet. Then they themselves are guilty of dhulm. They themselves are guilty of transgression. Or whenever you see your brother committing dhulm against himself, transgressing himself, in the form of fahsha, the same person who would never be embarrassed to show off and flaunt his sin in front of you, but you don't want him to think he's you don't want him to think that you're too religious. You don't want to say anything about what he's doing because you don't want him to think that you're judgmental, even though he has no problem shoving his sins down your throat. Oh, you know, why don't you say anything? Brother, you're going to this party. You know that this Eid party is really just a welcome back shaitan party. Why don't you say something? You know this brother. Why don't you go talk to him? Oh, I don't want to offend him. I don't want him to think that I'm being too strict. We started sounding like the people that attacked Islam. I don't want him to say I'm a Wahhabi. I don't want him to attack me. I don't want him to stop coming to... No, say something. Don't be a jerk about it. Don't be rude. Do it with etiquette. Say something though. Because the Prophet ﷺ said what? مَنْ رَأَى مِنْكُمْ مُنْكَرْ فَلْيُغَيِّرُهُ بِيَدِهِ Whoever amongst you sees evil, let him change it with his hand. You know what? There's some people that you can talk to and you have the authority to talk to that way and they appreciate it when you correct them that way. There are some people that are under your authority. The relationship of Abu Bakr and Umar radiallahu anhumah. When Abu Bakr pulls Umar by the beard and chastises him, Umar radiallahu anhu appreciates that. Because he knows that Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu has his back. He knows that these are two people that love each other for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the person that I know will accept that type of advice, fine, I'm going to give him that type of advice. I'm going to change things with a little bit of roughness because sometimes you need tough love. If I can't do that because I'll get sued or because it might be counterproductive, فَبِلِسَانِي Say something. Allah, this is free. الأمر بالمعروف والنهي عن المنكر with your tongue it's free just say something say it politely don't be a jerk unfortunately the only time many times we see the only times brothers decide to become active in da'wah and decide to do أمر بالمعروف والنهي عن المنكر enjoying the good and forbid the evil is when they see someone that they can pick on the young guy that comes to the masjid dressed in a certain way oh I'm gonna go pick on him I'm gonna go tell him that his pants are sagging 
I'm going to get on that guy. I'm going to get on that guy. No. Pick on somebody your own size. Try to do something. Put yourself in a little bit of inconvenience for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you can't do that, فَبِقَلْبِ At least hate it. At least feel a sense of, of, of disgust when you see the disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taking place so openly, so bluntly. At least hate it on the inside. ذَلِكَ أَضْعَفُ iman. That's the weakest of faith that you will have. But dear brothers and sisters, let's get back to the injustice part. Umar ibn Abdul Aziz rahimahullah ta'ala because this is, I just want to end on this note with something very significant. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says in an authentic hadith also in a tirmidhi, Man kana yu'minu billahi wal yawm al-akhir Whoever believes in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the last day, فَلَا يَجْلِسُ عَلَى مَائِدَةٍ يُشْرَبُ عَلَيْهَا الْخَمْرِ Let him not sit at a table where liquor is being served. You know, I'm not exaggerating with you. I'm not, I'm not being sarcastic. Somebody actually called me a few months ago and he says, our Imam stood on the manbar and he said that, you know, sometimes I'm the designated driver. And he was proud of that. You know, I never drink when I'm around them. Be, you know, be open with people. Go ahead, hang out with people. Do what they're going to do. But just don't drink. Be the designated driver. MashaAllah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you. They should name him something now. They should have made him a wali at that point. It doesn't work that way. Umar ibn Abdul Aziz rahimahullah, and this is a famous incident in the books of fiqh. And I want you to think about this incident. Four men are brought to Umar ibn Abdul Aziz and they had liquor, young men. And Umar ibn Abdul Aziz said, lash all four of them. And they said, but ya Amir al Mu'mineen, one of them, and I know what you guys think I'm going to say. You think I'm going to say he wasn't drinking. It's actually more than that. One of them was actually fasting. Subhanallah. Three guys were drinking. The fourth one, not only was he not drinking, he was fasting. And Umar radiallahu anhu said, which one was he? So they pointed him out. He said, lash him first. He's the first person that deserves to be lashed because he's giving implicit approval to their actions. When you sit with a person who's earning himself hellfire, who's digging himself into a hole that will earn the, dis the displeasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who's just buying himself hell, and you don't do anything about it, what kind of friend are you? What kind of friend are you? And you know what he's doing, and you know what that's going to lead him to, but you don't want to offend him. Give me a break. On the day of judgment, that's your worst enemy. Because he'll come to you, he'll say, why didn't you tell me? Imagine a person dying of dehydration and who needs a sip of water and you've got the sip of water in your pocket and you've got it in the bottle of water you've got that bottle of water in your pocket and you say I don't think I'm going to give it to him because I think he's going to feel a little degraded if I go down to him and I put water in his mouth he's going to feel like an animal let me let him die instead it's not going to happen don't fool yourself Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu said I seek refuge in the day Listen very closely to this. That the Asi, the one who's disobedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is proud of his disobedience, and the one who is obedient is embarrassed of his is shy of his obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I don't want to be awkward. I don't want to be gharib. I don't want to be strange. But Allah Rasulullah said, Fatuba lil ghuraba. There is a valley in paradise for those who are strangers, dear brothers and sisters. But now let's go to the other side and I'll end with this insha'Allah ta'ala. And I want you to think about this. Zulm, transgressing another human being's rights or an animal or anything else. You know, many times we think about zulm on a global stage. The same people that are sitting around and smoking their cigarettes and, do, and, and smoking their hookah and are talking about what's going on in the Arab Spring and talking about what's going on in Pakistan and talking about this and talking about that are the same people that are committing dhulm in their own houses. The same people that oppress their wives. The same people that oppress their children. The same people that oppress their parents. And you know what? Let's say that none of that is true. If you know of someone who is being wronged, and you're not saying anything about it. You're committing crime. You are committing a crime in the eyes of Allah, in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because you're letting that person be transgressed. And just because this isn't my battle to pick, this isn't my fight, 
I'm going to leave it alone. Think locally. Think in your own family. Think in your own business. Think in your own social circle. Think in your own community. Think in your own country. Think globally. Don't allow zulm to take place on your watch. Injustice to take place on your watch. And you know what? Once you get involved in the problem, there's two things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says you better keep in mind. فَإِذَا قُلْتُمْ And if you speak on a matter, فَعْدِلُوا Be just. وَلَوْ كَانَ ذَا قُرْبَى Even if it's your own family member that you've got to call out and you've got to say, look man, you were wrong. You're committing zulm against that person. You better stop. Do what you've got to do. And you know, there's the other thing, and this is common in Muslim communities. When you really don't like somebody, you wait for him to fall in the public eye because mashallah, because our communities are so close-knit. When something happens to a human being, when something happens to a Muslim, we don't need CNN and Fox News and all of those. It's all going through our own radars, through our own transmitters. And we will destroy that person because we didn't like him in the first place, so we wanted to put him down. وَلَا يَجْرِمَنَّكُمْ شَنَانُ قَوْمٍ عَلَىٰ أَلَّا تَعْدِلُوا Don't let your hate for a people allow you to be unjust towards them. Even if you don't like that person. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you the job of not being passive. When you know that someone's being wronged, you better say something about it. And if you can do anything about it, you better do something about it. And then what about globally? What about the problems in Syria and Palestine? Are we supposed to just sit down? Absolutely not. Because the Prophet ﷺ described أَعْظَمُ الْجِهَادِ The greatest jihad كَلِمَةُ حَقْءِ عِنْدَ سُلْطَانٍ جَائِرٍ A word of truth in the face of an oppressive tyrant. And I want you to think about that. And I'm so happy and overjoyed. And I'm not, I'm not just saying this to be here because I know this is where the Irvine 11 is. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them. Brothers who spoke up, even if it's not going to have a big deal. And I know we've got the pessimists, oh, what did they really change? What did they really do? It doesn't matter. You tried. You tried. You say something. And you know what? If everyone says something, it will have an effect, inshaAllah ta'ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us, to be amongst those who are active in enjoining good and forbidding evil. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not to make us mute and silent devils. Allahumma ameen. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa nisa'ar al-muslimin. Fastaghfiru innahu huwa al-ghafur rahim الحمد لله رب العالمين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين ولا عاقبة للمتقين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على عبدك ورسولك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا. Dear brothers and sisters, just to end this khutbah and subhanallah, there's so much that I want to say about this topic because it's such a huge topic. But I just want to leave you with something, just a thought. When you see someone being wronged, or when you see someone wronging himself. What have you done to stop that wronging? What have you done to make the situation better? And I want you to think about this. You know, subhanAllah, they always calculate. If every Muslim paid zakat, you know when we talk about zakat, if I start talking about zakat right now, you're going to say, oh God, here we have another fundraiser. Alhamdulillah, I'm not here to fundraise, so you can't say that. But we've cheapened zakat. We've cheapened it. Because we've reduced it to only fundraisers. When someone wants your money, that's when you're going to hear about zakah. That's when you're going to hear about sadaqah. But what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala order you to do with that money? To help the masakeen, to help the fuqara, to help those in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to help those who have no homes, to lift injustices, to help the one who's buried in debt, to help the prisoner, all of these things. Don't be silent. And if you can't do anything at all for your brothers and sisters, at least you can make dua for them. You know the sister who's being oppressed by her husband, and you can't do anything about it, and you tried, make dua for her. You know about your brothers and sisters in Syria, and you can't do anything about it. Your brothers and sisters in Somalia, and you gave money, and after you gave money, you make dua for them, and you just try. And I'll end with one thought, and it's one statement only, and because this is one of the most powerful statements I ever heard in my life. One of the hardest things to deal with in religion, whether it's Islam or any other religion, is the concept of theodicy. How does Allah allow evil things to happen? How does Allah allow that young girl in Beijing to be run over? How does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow poverty in Somalia in this way, famine in the 21st century? And I just want you to think about this one statement and memorize it. Here's the saying. 
I wanted to ask God why he allows poverty and oppression and injustice to happen. But then I was afraid he might ask me the same question. Think about that. What have you done to stop these things? We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us amongst those who are qawwameen, who are strong in Allah subhanahu in, in their faith of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and shuhada ala nas, witnesses upon mankind, enjoining good and forbidding evil. Allahumma ameen. Allahumma khfir lil mu'mineen wal mu'minat wal muslimin wal muslimat al ahya'i minhum wal amwat inna ka sami'un qareebun mujibu da'wat. Allahumma khfir lana warhamna wa'afu anna wa la tu'adhibna. Rabbana zalamna anfusana wa in lam takhfir lana wa tarhamna lana kunanna min al khasirin. اللهم اغفر لوالدينا رب ارحمهما كما ربنا صغارا ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين وجعلنا للمتقين إماما اللهم انصر المستضعفين في كل مكان اللهم انصر المستضعفين في مشارق الأرض ومغاربها اللهم عليك بأعدائك أعداء الدين اللهم عليك بالخائنين اللهم أهلك الظالمين بالظالمين وأخرجنا من بينهم سالمين عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله يذكركم واشكروه على نعماء يزد لكم ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون وأقيم الصلاة